Hello, welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja. And today I will share some of my views about theory and praxis. Now, obviously, I have to say these two words in a linear fashion, which sometimes implicitly implies that theory and praxis are these two separate entities. And that's how most people also tend to treat them. Like some people would just say that's theory, it's got nothing to do with praxis. And vice versa, right? But you know, there are two sources where you can go to really understand clearly the loop that constitutes these two terms, which means that they are not necessarily separate, one or the other, but they are constantly interconnected. One is famously the Deleuze-Foucault interview, Intellectuals in Power, Intellectuals and Power, which actually was the interview that Gaitri Spivak responds to in her essay, Can the Subaltern Speak? And I'll post a link to that interview in the description. And there is a moment in that interview where Deleuze basically says, theory is praxis. Right? It's not separate or something to that effect, that it's not separate from practice or praxis itself. The other more comprehensive resource, of course, in understanding theory and praxis is Paulo Freire's Pedagogy of the Oppressed, right? And I have a whole series on it which you can watch. But what Freire famously asserts at different places in the book is that theory is reflection, thinking about concepts, and praxis is action, right? So praxis without theory is what he calls mere activism. And theory without praxis is what he calls mere intellectualism. So for Freire then, a praxis has both in it. It has the theoria, theory, and it has actual actions that we take to change the things, right? So both the concepts are not just interconnected, they depend on each other to define themselves. Now in terms of literary studies, most of the times if we think of theory, we think in terms of, oh, this is new criticism, you know, this is structuralism, post-structuralism, and then we think of it as a tool that allows us to open a text. But I think that's a very limited view of theory and its usage. Now, we all live in one or the other theory. We see the world from that perspective. Okay? So theory then informs the way we look at the text, what we find important, what we find significant in a given text. And what is it that we privilege over other things in a given text? So let me give you an example. Let's say I'm a post-colonialist, whatever that means these days. So when I pick up a novel, if it is set in India, chances are I'll probably not just focus on the aesthetic aspects of the novel. Because of my training and what I've read, my way of looking at the world has already been somewhat determined by that theory. So what I look in the text is, you know, who is colonized? Who is being a colonizer? What kind of lives do the native people live? How does the colonial in experience impact them? Now, all of this way of looking at it, at it is not natural. I'm seeing it because my professional training is to look for that, and theory informs that. Now, we could end it there, but if we talk about praxis, that means that whatever I've learned, whatever I read, for me then, must also become a means to do, actually do something in the world. So if I'm writing something, I will try to write in a way where it says something about the world or tries to give an alternative point of view. 
I might also take that theoretical knowledge and then put it into practice and work with a group who's fighting for their rights or fighting for environment, right? And that's where reflections combines with practice to become praxis. Now, a great example of that would be if you look at the Zapatista movement and uh, the role of uh, Marcos in it. Marcos, who was not indigenous, but he goes into the jungle and he brings with his the knowledge of whatever he has read, Foucault, Deleuze, Marx. And the people teach him about their way of life and their struggles. So this intellectual knowledge combined with real activism, real active fighting, then constitutes a kind of politics, a kind of praxis that we call Zapatism, which goes beyond Mexico, which is being emulated digitally and elsewhere. So I understand in so many ways the way literary theory is taught. It is taught with a very limited function, and we internalize that. And we start believing that as humanities scholars or teachers, our job is just to teach the text, right? And I've always found it to be the easier path because that allows me to control the situation. I'm here to teach this novel. And I'm going to use this theory to teach it. My job is not to teach people about justice and equity and love because the novel should be able to do that. If you've watched any of my videos on critical pedagogy, you already know that the books that I've read and my own experience has taught me that novels by themselves don't do that. It involves critical pedagogy. So a better way of using or thinking about theory would be that it's not a tool with which you open a text. As you read more and more theoretically, philosophically, you are defining your own self. You're constructing your own self. That self then sees the world from that philosophical and theoretical perspective. And then that's what you bring to a text and to actual practice in the world. Now, there is a little bit of a cautionary note, and Saeed talks about it in his book, The Word, the Text, and the Critic. And that is about his theorization of affiliation and filiation. And I have a video on that that you can watch. So filiation is sometimes what we get from a family group or a kinship group, right? Kinship group, and that defines our worldview, our politics. Affiliation is what we affiliate ourselves with as adults. Where do we go to school? What do we study? Which group we, we join, right? But what he says is that at a certain point in a scholarly career, the affiliative structures become kind of affiliated. And that means that we stop looking at the world from a different perspective. We just internalize whatever our own theoretical and philosophical grounding is and just constantly keep seeing the world through that. A better way of using theory or thinking the world through theory would be to be eclectic, right? To have your political leanings, you know, you believe in workers' rights, you believe in people's right to be fully realized human beings, that's your larger philosophical paradigm. But within that, sometimes you can use Foucault, sometimes you can use Marx, right? But be tolerant of differences. So let me give you an example of how theoretical and philosophical knowledge shapes our consciousness and then also helps us see the world from that perspective. Think of, let's say, if you are uh, an economist. If you have internalized that productivity is the most important thing, you will look at labor and think from the point of view of productivity. If you're a leftist economist, you will look at it from the point of a way of how labor is treated and how they are paid. You're using economic theory, but you're looking at the world differently, and it will allow you to draw different conclusions. That's it. I hope this was useful to you. Let me know what you think, and I will now talk to you next time. Until then, peace and love.